So now we'll take a brief moment and talk about uh, kind of a, an anomalous reaction in this chapter, and it's called Michael reaction. And Michael reaction is an example of what we call conjugate addition or 1,4 addition. Uh, and the reason it's an anomaly here is that it is not a substitution reaction at the alpha carbon, it's a substitution reaction at the beta carbon. So uh, it kind of doesn't seem to fit in with this chapter, although it fits in quite nicely. Um, it's used actually in combination often uh, with one of our standard alpha reactions, as we'll see in a little bit. Uh, but this Michael reaction, we have a very special nucleophile and a very special electrophile. Uh, and let's start with the electrophile. Sometimes we call that the Michael acceptor. And generally, it's going to be a conjugated carbonyl, but it might also be a, a conjugated cyano or a conjugated nitro group. Uh, so if we take a look at what's going on here, uh, if we have this conjugated system, a lot of students realize that this carbon right here has a partial positive charge. Like, yeah, big fat dipole moment right there. That carbon's got a partial positive charge and therefore electrophilic. But we can also look at this from a resonance perspective kick those electrons up to there and look at the minor resonance contributors here. And see, yep, just as we just said, we're going to have a partial positive charge on that carbonyl carbon. But we have one additional resonance structure with the conjugated system here, which is why we're going to have a partial positive charge on the beta carbon as well. So, and that's why this carbon right here is also partially positive and also potentially electrophilic. And it turns out whether or not a nucleophile attacks the carbonyl or whether or not a nucleophile attacks the beta carbon depends on the nature of that nucleophile. And most of the stronger ones, like organolithiums and grignards, so they tend to do 1-2 addition, attack the carbonyl, whereas some of the weaker ones, more stable ones, like lithium dialkylcuprates, uh, and then stabilized enolates, and we'll talk about what those look like. In fact, we'll just... There's one right there where an enolate is stabilized by uh, two additional resonance structures, two oxygens. It's alpha to two carbonyls is the most common example uh, of these Michael donors of the nucleophiles involved. Um, cool. This is kind of the nature of it. And if we kind of take a look here at a Grignard type nucleophile, so he would attack the carbonyl and kick these electrons up. And that's why he adds to this carbon. Whereas if we had a softer nucleophile, some would say, or in this case a weaker nucleophile, like a lithium dialkylcuprate, he would attack right here. These electrons get kicked over and these get kicked up to the oxygen and you end up with something looking like this. So, and you might recognize right off the bat that this is an enol and it tautomerizes to the more stable keto form. But Initially, the two things that were added were added to this carbon and to the oxygen, one, two, three, four atoms away or apart, and that's why they call it a one, four addition. So it's where they're initially added, not where they end up. But if you look at the net result here, net result is after the tautomerization is the nucleophile got added here, but a hydrogen got added here. So it might look like one, two addition if you look at the final result, but it's coined a one, four addition based on where they're originally added. Let's go take a look at some examples. So in this first example of a Michael reaction here, we've got a beta diketone, and adding sodium hydroxide to it will deprotonate one of these hydrogens, so effectively 100%. And I'm only going to draw the resonant structure with the negative charge on the carbon here, but yes, there are three resonant structures. So, But this is your classic Michael donor, so a stabilized enolate where it's stabilized by resonance with two oxygens, not just one. Uh, and this guy can then come and attack the beta carbon preferentially, not the carbonyl. So and now we'll have attached one, two, three, four carbons. So one, two, three, four carbons. So double bond is now going to be in this position. And we're going to have an oxygen right here. So and then technically a third step is we're going to do an acid workup. We'll draw that in. So in that acid workup, we're just going to protonate that oxygen. And once again, this is an enol, and it'll tautomerize to give you your final product. And that final product, one, two, three, four, looks like this. Cool. That is your classic Michael reaction. Again, there's some variances here, but the most common one, your nucleophile or Michael donor is going to be either a real stabilized enolate uh, or lithium dialkylcuprate, uh, and then your electrophile is going to be some sort of conjugated carbonyl.
So this next example is, gives a good contrast between where a Grignard would attack a conjugated carbonyl versus where a lithium dialkyl cuprate would. So if you notice these are both organometallics, and I like to think of them both as being the equivalent of a carbon anion. So either way. So in this case, they're both methyl organometallic. So in the Grignard's case, the Grignard being a stronger nucleophile, and sometimes some would say a harder nucleophile, is going to come attack at the carbonyl carbon, kick the electrons up. Cool, and then eventually we'll protonate this O with the acid workup step in step two. And again, we would call this a one, two addition because we added to two adjacent atoms. We added the methyl group to the carbon, we added the hydrogen to the oxygen, one, two addition. Now on the other hand, so with the lithium dialkocuprate being a weaker nucleophile, or some would say a softer nucleophile, so in this case it comes and attacks the beta carbon, like so. Cool, and when we add the H3O plus, the acid workup step in step two, it also protonates this guy. But again, that's going to tautomerize to the more stable keto form. Cool, and that's your final product. Now again, we still call this a 1,4 addition based on where the nucleophile and the hydrogen originally added back here. The nucleophile added here and the hydrogen added the oxygen one, two, three, four atoms apart. So that's where the one four addition name comes from yet again. But a big key here is that the nucleophile ultimately added to the beta carbon rather than to the carbonyl.